Frontier. This is Football Daft with Stephen Purden. Midfield Dynamo and Average Arthur. Chris Toll. Target Man. Suspicious Character. And... Welcome to Football Daft, it is the Daft the Scottish Football Podcast around. I am producer John, let us welcome the team, shall we? Let's introduce first a man who this week was banned from Twitter. It's Stephen <laughs> Gordon. Were you? <laughs> well, I sent it in the group chat, did you read that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't banned, my account was locked for a wee while because <laughs> of the... Do you want me to read it to you? Oh, I didn't even know that. Right, hey, hold on. I got an email, right? I've uh, never been left Twitter. Oh, I didn't get banned. I didn't get banned. Right, you might put that phone down sometimes, man. <laughs> I'll see you. Cool. Stay on track in a minute. Stay on track in a minute. So, it was, it was the, because of the music that was used, it was Dear Sir Madam, I'm contacting you on behalf of the International Federation, Federation of the Phonographic Industry and the record companies it represents. Our membership across IFPI and its network, blah, 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 blah. The information set, where is it? Where? We have learned that your service is making available distributing and referring linking users. We have included in the table below the URL for the locations we have identified. They're asking for it coming down. So it was the video that me and John are going to be collaboration on of, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Bundesliga expert Chris Toll, and it was because we used the Simon and Garfunkel song, Hello Darkness, My Old Friend. <laughs> Oh, I'll tell you what, I would report you again, all over again, every day. <laughs> I was just thinking. <laughs> every day. And that man there is one Scott Employee of the Month for saving a life, and he only got a certificate for it, but we can't talk about it. It's Chris Toll. That's just true. Not allowed to talk about Not it. Not all superheroes wear capes. But I'll exactly. tell you something, the population is plus one because of me. That's exactly, all, mate. That, You're a superhero. Superhero. And you can, we can't talk about it. And finally, a man who's been getting it tight and trolled off a bunch of wings on Twitter this week. <laughs> from a guy oh, who plays computer games on Twitch. It's the one and only Grado. I mean, how can you say it's like at me, Grado? I fucking dived to my house at right, right, me. Hold on, I think we've got... Right, so remember... You what you're saying, because he's going to stream in day two. I, I, know he'll, I know he'll be listening to it in his ma's bare basement, right? But, like, let's, you know... We've got to talk. Don't, we've got, we've got don't to... I mess with a TikToker, mate. Right, oh, fuck the TikTokers. <laughs> right, last week on the show, remember we were talking about Gradle playing a charity match, and Gradle was saying, oh, I was I had the glory in front of me, he missed it, the penalty. He gradle the story, man. Yeah, he like, anyway. Listen, no, see before you move on, because uh-huh. that, this, this is what annoyed me the most. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, you see he's a big fucking golden wonder and you're fucking thumb hanging in it. <laughs> I'm put the crystal when I'm talking to. Sorry, lads. Oh, you see, there's half your, your horn and your thumb just in the fucking golden wonder. Right. There we go. <laughs> I did... You can if you get the video version, you can see Chris. Uh, do you know what really fucks me off? They changed the golden wonder from blue ready sorted to red. That's anyway. Sorry, continue, Gradle. Right. So I know that sometimes I've got a habit of exaggerating stuff. Yes. Right. Aye. But I didn't exaggerate last, that, that last week. It was you, because it was, because you, I was fifty. You, you, mate, you didn't have to straight at him. He dived. He <laughs> left. He saved it. I but he died. I. I Right, I tell, I, 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 I tell you what, let's, this Twitcher heard the podcast last week and has report, retorted to Grado on Twitter. So let's play the clip and we'll also get to see, if you're watching the video version, Grado's miss penalty. Okay, so let's look at the clip right now. Here's the story and the video. And of course, was I not the last penalty taker, the fifth and final penalty taker? And the first I'm listening to the podcast, playing Grand so Theft Auto. Nothing wrong with that. I don't think it was to win the game either. The keeper was a twitcher. I thought, fuck it, I'll go. He's talking about me, I thought, John. Um, and the PA's gone, no, 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 it's great to take the penalty to win the game for the blue team. Oh, they remember that he goes, yeah, we were. I was dead. He did such a horrible feeling. It was in the corner. He put it bottom right and I fucking bummed out, man. Go, babe. Strovies is one of them simple things. Grado talks shite. He put it to his bottom right and I palmed it wide. Do you know what? I'll get the video. I'll show you the video. Look at this. Grado says he put this down the middle, by the way. The guy's not down the fucking middle. It's not down the middle. It's not down the middle. 
Pub. Anyway, right. Do you know what's better than that? Do you know what's better than that? Right. What I liked even more, what this created. Because I'm I don't start back filming another city until a week in Monday, right? So my days are long, right? When my wings go to school, see when Grado goes retro and goes like fucking, I don't know, like 2010 Grado and starts tweeting and all that, you know what I mean? And getting involved in <laughs> Like me when I'm pushed after a Rangers game. When, it, when, it goes, when it goes 2008 Crystal. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this, that, this young female, right, called Erin, right, he said, I was there at Grado Wrestling. Tag- oh, fuck, hold on. Aye. She's tagged the minute. He said, I was there at Grado Wrestling. It wasn't there in the middle and Grado took his time <laughs> He reply and just replied, cool, with a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> so and then this boy, hold oh, no, this boy says, calling out Grado Wrestling. What do you think, Grado? Uh, where's the footage for after the penalty? Fairly routine save. You're actually doing yourself out of glory because it was definitely win the game. Anyway, I'm out it. We, will st- we still won anyway. At Graham Junior Watt. Tell him. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this twi- uh, Twitcher, TikToker, whatever he is, T- at TTV's Jose Santana is calling you out here, Grado. How you, how, what are you going to do no, about this? The only thing I'm gutting about is uh, when I was biting to these lasses on Twitter and wee guys and stuff like that, I was like, oh, fuck, I hope Bob doesn't see this. <laughs> 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 you fucking saw it all. I was like, how do you come across that? I was purely like, feces me, he's going to me up, man, for biting. <laughs> See, like you're saying, Gredon, and John's come in and says, oh, he can have a go at me, fees Ma's basement. I've just had a look at his account. He's got nearly 700,000 followers. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, oh, I do oh, you mate, fucked it, man. You don't fuck with a TikToker, man. Ryan, Ryan, don't cut that out. Let's see what happens to John. <laughs> ah, fucking bring it on, TTV, Hosanna. <laughs> Whatever your name is. John, man. John, mate. Though. John. What? Honestly, man. That's fucking... I, you know your address is going to get posted on TikTok, mate. Uh, um, and you know what? I, I kind of like the boy. <laughs> I, I think he's a great guy. And if he wants to share fine, my, my TikTok at the real time Spragans, by all means, do <laughs> there you that. Go. Brilliant. There you go. So you a lot of for you there. A lot of for you there. Anyway, I'll not be getting back up to Aberdeen. Fuck <laughs> That's him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, more about Aberdeen a bit later on. Uh, mind the fuck about work chat last week, boys, when Mer Fraser, who worked at Bathgate train station and helped the tramp get away with a four thousand pound <laughs> bike by Sora <laughs> Chain. Remember, we asked the question. We went back to him and said, "Did you get the sack for this, Fraser?" He got back in touch and says, "Ha ha, fuck knows how I didn't get the sack." A week later, however, someone stole the radiator out the bathroom and walked out the front door. I never noticed it because I was watching darts on my iPad. Did you say I wasn't very popular? I've left now though, so fuck them. Ha ha ha. <laughs> um, so that was the conclusion to Fraser's stint I at the train station. Uh, no birthday corner this week, Chris. I uh, like fuck man, but. Well, but, you're going to be going. You're going to be going horse too, man. I know what that singing you're doing. But no, stop I, I don't go. I don't go horse. I go Shetland pony. Brilliant. I knew you were going to say something like that. I knew it. I fucking knew it. Scott like Bailey's you, got to take your satisfactory this. drink. Beautiful. There you go. In case see, anybody didn't get that, that was a height joke. That. Hi guys, hope you're all well. Massive fan of the podcast, found it during lockdown and went down a rabbit hole with all the old episodes. I'm marrying my lovely fiance Robin next Saturday and she's Aww. sick of hearing the sound of the boys in the house, particularly Stephen Purder's laughter and Toe singing. Any chance <laughs> of a wee message from Toe ahead of the big day in the style of Tina Turner? I'm sure no. she would love nothing more than her bridesmaid playing it while they get ready. So she- Chris... Could you sing Go Into the Chapel in the style of Tina Turner? Is that possible? She doesn't deserve it. She doesn't deserve it. I don't, no. I don't think she does deserve it. Why? I'm honest with you. I'm she's sick of listening to me and Toe. And I'm going to tell you something else, right? She might be yeah. sick of listening to us. I might, she might not be my favourite person on earth. But I don't want to ruin the lassie's wedding day, John. Right. So, so, so <laughs> let's, move, let's move on. For the, for the lovely Robin, Toe. Tina oh. Turner... Going to the chapel. So I can't let this go any longer, mate. You've got a bit of golden wonder Chris stuck under your beak, mate. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, I, I haven't agreed. Though. That's a grey hair, mate. Oh, sorry. Okay. All right. Okay. There Chris go. Toll, going to the chapel in the style of Tina Turner. Going to the chapel and I'm going to get mad. <laughs> I said I'm going to the chapel. I'm going to get married. 
going to the chapel. And I'm going to get married. I'm going to have a long life, a long happy life. Me and my man will be man and wife. Oh, good. That's all I can think. I hope the reception don't stink. Because <laughs> you're going to get married. <laughs> no chapel gonna get married. Yeah, sure. is, yeah, I, can I say something? Can I say something? That is the best one yeah, yet. Oh, that was brilliant, really mate. That, that was, was brilliant. If you want a wee oh. musical message from Christopher Toll, get in touch. Uh, I'm gonna start fucking Apple. charging for it. Yeah, but in fact, you want to know something? You only get one if you sign up to the Patreon. There, how'd you like your apples? There you oh. go. Oh. oh. There you That's go. A there you go. Uh, in fact, boys, do you know what? If you sign up to the Patreon, you get one, no matter what. Right, there, there you go. go. Wow. How do you like them? Uh, oh. Sign up to the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash football daft. Uh, and you can uh, uh, play me at FIFA and you can like, get an autograph after Edo. Uh, I'm great all happy, not you. So, what's been happening in Scottish football, boys? Uh, let's talk about Scotland first off. Last week we were sitting here predicting we're going to pump the Republic of Ireland. What the fuck happened at the weekend? Jeez. It's shite being Scottish. Mm. Yeah. The lowest of the low. It's coming to fucking earth. I'll just get my. I'm oh, getting pissed man. off watching international football but end up there. Eh? I'm, I'm so, so glad oh. I was on the night shift, man, because i never seen any of it. Oh, it was terrible. Absolutely. Mm. I don't know what happened. I do not know what happened to the, the team. It was... It, the, def- the way we defend, man, it's like every time Ireland went forward, they looked like they were going to score. Yeah, I mean, Duffy. It was Duffy. Time, it was Duffy in the The corners, the corners. And I'll tell you something, right? Shoot me down in flames all you want. John McGinn needs to do more. Mm. He needs to do more. Honestly, see if that's another player, that performance against Ireland, see if it's anybody else, they're fucking caught in it, they're getting dogs abuse. Mm. Right? See John McGinn for me, see these games. Like two, two closes came in at 40. He's got to make the keeper work. The second one, he doesn't even make the keeper work and Ireland got the partner score. Do you know what I mean? It's like, if you're that, I don't know. I just, sometimes I look at him and I think he flatters to deceive. Cracking ass, but... Yeah, he has got a cracker. The players looked out in their arse, talking about arses. They just looked like it knackered. They look, all looked absolutely knackered, you know. They played a lot of football. I mean, do you give that as an excuse? Because so, I guess I, 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 they probably played a lot more games than the Irish players have played because obviously there's a lot more of them playing in Europe. A lot more, we've got heavier schedules with, with the championship. I wish Clark happened. would just stick to, at least stick to the, a team that he's going to play every time. Because I feel as if he, he swaps it a bit too much. I think you, uh, these games you've got to, because I mean, these Nation League's games have kind of replaced friendlies, so I think he's trying different things. They're but, just uh, fucking glamorised friendlies, aren't they? They are. They are, really. But I mean, obviously, we then went on to uh, beat Armenia, but I have to say that first half, it, until they got a man sent off, we were only looking too sharp I just balls and over the top. three at the back, mate. They, yeah. the three at the back just kept getting... Every time Armenia came forward as well, like the I said, ball, about the the game. Top. every time, aye. every time. Aye. But obviously, what you up to, Tom? <laughs> <I'd>, sorry, <laughs> I'd, sorry, I'd sun stuck my tooth there. I had to fucking pack it up. Disgusting. Uh, yeah. hey, oh, and, and, oh, and and again, everyone all right? Aye. Again, yeah, if is you, there any, is there anything you want to talk about? <laughs> no, not all, man. You sure? <laughs> aye. Have I done? Know. Have I done something? I don't know. Have you? Because you seem like you have, mate. Honestly, I've, I've had. I feel that shut up, Gregory. You're going to make me paranoid as fuck. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm just thinking. I'm, uh, I'm just tired, lads. Like, so right. Just okay. Angry. Okay. So yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. The Armenia, we go on, and that's kind of this is kind of international football. And we're kind of in a football void for the next few weeks. Um, it's not stopped. There's news happening. No, Dundee United uh, have announced the departure of Tam Coach. We are talking about that last week. It's not Rekia, Recheka he's going to, mm. though. It looks like it's Hungarian club Budapest Honved that he's heading to now. Again, You're just... some outfit, man. <laughs> I couldn't tell you anything about them. <laughs> Could not say anything about them. Uh, but, they, I mean, it's fair play to him, you know. He's obviously went, right, 
I've had a good season. I'm going to move on and try and prove my worth somewhere else and try and increase my money or what have you. But well, good. I think good on him that he's gone to a country like that because you know he could end up going down to England playing league, managing a League Two team. You'll never see him again. I think respect him for. It, it's kind of it kind of it, it touches on a wee bit of what Toole was saying was it a couple of weeks ago or something. Dundee United were a very hard team to beat. It looked like they had a good yeah. kind of yep. system going there. And it's another manager leaving our country that you go, he's got something about him, but he's away. Because I think it just speaks volumes about the Scottish game again. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Seeing teams like fucking Hornvedder stealing your, stealing your like, shining lights, basically, a management up in this country, it's fucking, it's so it's soul destroying, man. Honestly. But- also, it's what I think is good about it as well. He's gone to hungry, right? He's going to learn. It's going to be a new coach. It's going to be probably a, a different style of football. Eventually, if he comes back, he's he's his worth is going to be a lot more because he's been earlier and done that. And man, they, they fucking beat England for nothing. Aye, but Greg, Greg, don't remember so, I mean, it wasn't fucking Hunved that beat England for nothing, mate. I know, but what I'm saying is there must be something about some of the players aye. that the hungry can get in the I mean, division. It's a strange one. I mean, I'm just looking at Honved just now. They've only got a capacity of eight thousand five hundred. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's like it's like eight thousand three hundred more that will go to the games that they did at Tannadice spot, mate. That's the the United season accumulation. Mm -hmm. Fucking fan. Well, it's not really that. Let's be honest, it's not really. But um, it's like I say, it's it's hard to watch because you want to keep your talent in in this country Mm -hmm. and. What is it? I mean, is it? It's obviously an ambition thing, man. Because I'm sure then the United would have offered them better terms after the season they had last year. So it's a, yeah. it's a strange one for me. It really is. It, Money it, talks. Uh, yep, yeah, it does indeed. Uh, and the man set to replace him, um, apparently in advance talks with Dundee United. Jack Ross. Jack Ross. Yeah, that's a good move for Dundee United. Aye, I think um, it's a good move for both parties. I think it's a good mm-hmm. move for Jack Ross and Ox. I think. I mean, they've got a really. They've got a, They've got a, a right decent squad. There, They've got they? some good young players in that squad. They have in Jack Ross. I, I like Jack Ross. Something about him I've always kind of liked. I don't I know. Think, I, I think I've pulled, pulled the trigger too quick on Jack Ross. I think anyway. 100% agree, though. Yeah, 100%. I think everyone yeah. sort of said that. Though Hibs supporters that, that I speak to said the football was minging. Absolutely minging. They were surprised at how well they did it early on in the season. But mm. I, you maybe, maybe he was just waiting to... To, to see how it would go, you give him an R transfer window, who knows what would have happened. Um, we've got to talk about the the Rangers deal here uh, with since Rangers will no longer be required to participate in the SPFL's since sponsorship deal following a dispute over the car dealer's involvement. But Neil Doncaster, the chief exec, says... This will remain materially unchanged after a revised deal has been agreed. Rangers have refused to promote the deal and taken the matter to court, uh, citing the the deal with parts of Hamilton, saying it was a rival. Spokespersons for Rangers said, um, this is a full vindication of our stance throughout the past season and further highlights wide-ranging concerns regarding the corporate governance of the SPFL. Uh, meanwhile, Doncaster's back in saying, the new deal protects Cinch's pivotal investment into Scottish football. What have you made of all of this, boys? Well, I can tell you they know that Cinch are probably rubbing their hands together because of this this has all been, see all this talk? It's they, been couldn't, they, couldn't have, from... they could not have bought the publicity that Aye. this has given them. Aye. They couldn't have bought the publicity they'll be that mailing, this has given they'll, they'll be more than happy, but um, I don't, can, I, can I think we phase out this story, Bob? What about you? It just, I mean, I think everything kind of dangerous will say not a lie about it. I think, obviously, they've kind of... dug their heels in and they've stood, stood, stood firm on it. And I think it's, been, just... kind of vind- it's been vindicated, but well, they, mm. it's, it's, they've Doncaster's community gone right he's were never forced to be contractually obliged to stick to that so Rangers were saying that all along that's my interpretation of it so it's all been a big fucking hoo-ha for none and but, I'm not just but, saying it because I'm a Rangers fan but I think Rangers were right then I'd, but why is this I mean uh, well we all know the reason why but why? Rangers have had alcohol uh, sponsors in the past when there's been alcohol sponsors in the cup they've had betting sponsors when there's been betting sponsors elsewhere so why then suddenly uh, they turn around and now they're seem to, they're getting basically money for doing fuck all uh, but then the, the owner I mean I mean, obviously no, no, we all no, will Rangers, Rangers, Rangers aren't getting paid for it 
I don't know about that, Chris. I think I don't know what the deal is, but I, I suspect they're getting money out of it in some way. And wait, listen, I'll, I will backtrack absolutely. See if Rangers are getting no money at the cinch deal, fair fucks, because that, you know, that means obviously the money's going elsewhere into the SPFL. But if they're getting money from cinch, it's how having their cake and eat it, surely. Right, but what if, what if on their terms, since I've said, to say, say the money gets revised, I bet there's wee bits and bobs in that, like, right, we'll give you so much if so many amount of clubs do well in Europe this season. Just say, for example, Rangers gone to Europa League. That could have, that might have added on, so there could be some clause in there that says, right, one of the teams has done this well, it's brought that, that many eyes onto the league, will bump up money. That could be one of the terms and conditions, would you be happy then? Would you still be kind of angry at that? Possibly, I mean, I, I, I see to be honest. Surely, all that it. stuff's got to be looked at. I don't think it will, Grado. I don't. You don't think, think so? I don't think it will have come into play at all. I mean, it, it'll be interesting to see what the deal is, but it does just if it is a case of Rangers, you know, getting the getting the cake and eating it, it's 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 not right. It's not right. I would it's be, be for now, but also what you're saying, John, about the lager companies. I think that what's different is the, the chairman owns. Uh, you know the, the the parts of Hamilton. That's his. Of course, aye, he's going to... I mean, there's a hundred car companies. Aye, so I mean? aye, but Gredo's right because the chairman owns the rival company. When mm. we were having a sponsor, no, for I example, like, no, but when we're having a rival, uh, when we're having like McCoon's Lager or something, whatever, a fucking Fetty Two Red and playing the Betfred Cup. That's different. Our chairman doesn't own Fetty Two Red. Mm. So, so there's a total difference there. There's a there's a conflict of interest when it comes to. That's the words, conflict of interest. Well, I, 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 listen, I get that. I, abs- I absolutely get that. But as long I'm saying as they're not seeing money out of this deal, that's fair in that I case. Don't, how don't do you, how do you know they're seeing money out of it, John? I, I mean, I'm assuming. I'm, I'm assuming. I mean, maybe people... No, I think they will. Otherwise. I, I, think I, don't, I don't think they will, because right. why in God's name... Would because it's Rangers. I, because it's Rangers. So Simple fucking as that. What? Because well, we because are, it, because we are, we are the stuff. people. I told you, tell them, boy. <laughs> because it's rain, because it's dangerous. Because it's one of the two big clubs in Scotland. I cannot see. You know. Do you, do you honestly see Celtic sitting back and allowing that to happen? I, I don't know, Chris. It'll be interesting. I'm sure we'll find out over the next week or see, so. See, see, how, see how see how kind of angry I'm getting. Google it. See how it. see how angry I'm seeing Tol now. I really hope we are seeing money with it, man. Stevie, I don't give a fuck about it, mate. I honestly don't give a fuck you about it. You honestly think Celtic would sit back and let that happen? No, no, I don't give a fuck. No, I don't give a fuck, Stevie. Rangers will still profit from the new SPFL since Steel, despite being excluded from a revised title sponsorship contract. Yeah. Ebert's Cub have been in this repute with the league over the past year with the car retail company. It's ridiculous. Deal is a Absolutely it's fucking ridiculous. It's fucking poetic, man. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fucking man. ridiculous. It's it's ridiculous. Ranger, it's it's Rangers fault. Fault. Could you know exactly how fucking ridiculous it but John, is? How, hey. is it, how is it Ranger's fault? Let, let me that. It's, it's not Ranger. Listen, it's not Ranger's fault, Gregor. Right. Right. So, 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 right. so, so see, so see if Rangers, Rangers, right, go like that away at the start, right? We're not, de- we're not doing that, right? And then singe. Go to the fucking Neil Doncaster and that and go, but we still want Rangers to be, we still want to fight because we, we want to be this, we want to be part of this. And Rangers go, but we're not doing it. But we'll take your money if you want, we're not doing it. And yeah. Neil Doncaster's going, we'll go to take you to court. And Rangers go, we'll take me to court then, but I'm still not doing it. And since you're going, but we still want to give them money, who's the daft here? It's not Rangers. Mm. What's well, it? It's an absolute it's fuck up. Not... It's an absolute so, fuck up. So how's it? It's not ridiculous on Rangers part. Listen, they've got Rylan Clark at the helm tweeting about every two minutes, man. They're not worried. <laughs> no. But what I'm trying to say... That could have been, been you, It could have been me. What I'm trying to say here is, but it's just another chapter in fucking cunts that are in power in our country, in football, that are a fucking joke. I, I, would get, I absolutely Rangers think are, we're all so, in agreement so with that. It's, it's not Rangers' fault. It's I, can't, one. I cannot believe the other teams are sitting back and... I can't believe that either, Chris. Basically, basically letting Rangers that. fucking fling one up no, I mean, I know, man. It's 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 mental that we're doing something Scottish football for a change. Still, I mean, it's not your fucking mob pulling the strings, man. Oh, that's true. That's <laughs> true. Mate. Right. Okay. We'll have more than that over the weeks. I'm pretty sure. Uh, Aberdeen. Uh, Calvin Ramsey's off to Liverpool. Four point five million with add-ons. <laughs> uh, oh. Could could steam. Tell me, you both took a drink at the same time there. <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> a victory drink and a rage he's drink. A, he, he's a pure. He's a pure hangman. But he won there, didn't he? That ended a bit frosted. That was a bit. Aye, frosted, it was like, I was like. 
<laughs> it was like at the end, man. It's not your club for a change. Aye. Aye. <laughs> so, <laughs> aye, Calvin well, Ramsey becomes... Africa. Comes the most, uh, the biggest transfer for Aberdeen, four point five million from oh, Liverpool. It's, it's, I was going to the school there, right? They pick the wings up, and this guy Barry, who's a big Rangers man, so I, but you're so bassy to Liverpool for fucking four point five million. You <laughs> <laughs> mean the other boys going like that? No. What? I just heard that. I was like, that's Calvin Ramsey, <laughs> and he's pulled like, out his phone. Oh, of course. Oh, fuck, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that, that obviously good mo- good money for Aberdeen, good young player. But I mean, the worry for me is it's like an our like we've talked about in this podcast before, an our young Scottish talent that might go down to England and just get lost, you know. So hold on, I'm kind of a bit slow because the last thing I know, knew about this was they were wanting ten million for him. So it's a done deal, and he's went for four and a half. A done deal. Well, I think add, it can rise to like six or seven. Yeah, plus add-ons, Grado. <laughs> I mean, he's no. I, I can't see him breaking it in that Liverpool first team, can you? What? What is, is he a left back? Or right, right back? back. Right back. Oh, he'll get. He'll get in ahead of Trent, mate. Brother. And you've got Trent in front of you, man. Joe Gomez as well, um, obviously, uh, but he's apparently on his way to Villa. Uh, if rumours would be true, but I, again, you can't. Eighteen-year-olds. He's just going to go into the system down there. Maybe get a cup game, you know, and then what happens? You, you, you never know. know. You never, never know. know. You never that, know. Let's let's not be fucking typical. We're shy, Scottish, we're shy. You never know he could go in there, see, to be honest, set the head of light, but there's no I, fucking chance. I don't, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think it's a case of uh, us thinking we're shy. I think this is a case of Liverpool. Nah. Fucking tremendous, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, well, exactly. I, I tell you what, but I think it's good to see players for, out with the old firm going for decent money. Because then yeah. when it comes... You would say that being a Don, you could. <laughs> 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 no, what I was going to say is it makes our, what, what, what the old fun want for their players become, do you know aye, what I mean? Aye, 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 if, aye, if, aye. If, if an yeah. Aberdeen player's gone for four and a half, then you know, right, if you want to start talking about such and such player, it starts at this. Aye. I've, I've not really seen that to boy. I've not seen, I think, I've only seen these snippets here. I can't really comment further on it. I've never really thought anything about him. He's never really caught my eye, if I'm being honest. But, you know, like, he's, he's never really been in the he's never really been in the headlines or anything like that. He's never like, mm-hmm. th- like throughout the season, folk haven't been going, Oh, that's Calvin Ramsey some player, by the way. You know what I mean? See like the way, even on a lesser extent, like uh, Dodge, uh, sorry, Doy get Hibs and uh, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, you hear about them in the papers, you hear about clubs being interested in them and all that. Aye, it's just aye. that's just come out of nowhere. I don't mm-hmm. know, I, I, like you say, Stevie, I've not seen a lot of him, so I can't really comment, but fair fucks to Aberdeen, man. Yeah. If, they've, if they've managed to get that money for him, then fair play. Yeah. A guy that's leaving Aberdeen, uh, well, left Aberdeen, as we know, Andy Constantine's going to St. Johnson. That's the perfect club for him, isn't it? Uh, oh, he's going to love it there, isn't he? He's going to love it. Big tight team, hoofing a board, the defending. They said, hold the line, hold, hold the line. line. Exactly, <laughs> aye, yep, yep. 35-year-old ones get a two-year deal. Uh, St. Johnson also signed, member Dre right? who was they had and then signed for Hibs. They've signed him back then as well. Mm. So, um, Getting aye, their and, business in early. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. there yeah, seem to be. Thing. seem to be yeah. getting a lot of players in at Hibs. Um They've just signed a Portuguese boy who they're fucking raving about as well. Jota. Um, no, they're not saying Jota, no, no. <laughs> Thank fuck. Thank fuck. Man. Talking about Jota, Chris, we've not talked about the Cameron Carter Vickers. Obviously, that happened over the last week as well. Happy yep. with that, obviously. Uh, my mate actually delivered the, the tiles to his house, John. Is that right? Um, yes. Big, yeah. big, big Cameron opened the door and he says, What's happening, Cameron? Are you just getting this place ready for getting it sold? And he just winked at him and says, just wait and you'll see what's happening. There you go. And there you go. That was it. Done and dusted. Is that true? Oh, no, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. I, but I'm, I'm fucking over the moon, man. Over the yeah, moon. Yeah, no, I, did. I, like, I quite like the C, CV thing that they did on their Twitter. That was quite yeah. smart from Celtic. Yeah. Um, do you think Jota will get done, Chris? I'm hearing that it's they're struggling well, to I get him. See if he doesn't sign soon, he's going to get fucking done. <laughs> um, aye, because you think that would have been done as well, but I wonder what's going on there. You heard anything? I don't know, man. I think he's, I, I'm not 100%, but I think he's actually still sunning himself all over the fucking world. Well, he's spotted he, in New York wearing a Celtic top, so. 
he played a five aside game or something. <laughs> he came a five with a cell and stop. That's pure Kieran Tierney part, isn't it? That's a red name. No, it's a red name. We're not Celtic top. They're fucking pure wild, aren't they, Celtic boys? Oh, I they're pure. Um, apparently, uh, uh, you're, rage, you're raging, aren't you? Because he's playing fives in New York. No, because he's going <laughs> to be. Right here, he's going to be here to fucking sneak in ahead of Barris at the back stack all next season. Well, t- I'm talking <laughs> back. Is, is, is Joe, I'm moving to Turkey. Well, talking about Barris, he aye, he could be away to Trabzonspor, isn't he? Um, they're looking aye. at him. Who uh, Barris? Aye. I yeah. thought there was nothing. I, I know. Joshua Barry said today it's nothing in it, not that. But I think, I think it might not be Trabzonspor, but I think he is. I think Borna is going to be off. Yeah, he's off. All right. Maybe he's just going to get his teeth done. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ruth's just going to make it here. Aye. Has he? Has he? <laughs> Huh? Ah, wow, there you go. Well, we Ruth coming back next year with full head of hair, that'll be interesting. Um, he'll, be, he'll, he'll be like Ur Joa, pure <laughs> long hair, not <laughs> <laughs> uh, right? Okay, on to the daft boys. Would you like to talk about the toddler who embarrassed his parents in being Q? Would you like to talk about men being coned, or would you like to talk about midwives revealing the worst things they've witnessed in the delivery room when it comes to men? I, do you know what, boys? I think we've spoken enough about like dodgy stuff. Like I don't know, have we? Was it last week? No, actually, I forget what I'm saying. Are you, no. t- are you talking about jobbies and that, Stevie? Aye. So aye, let's not go with the midwife. We've, we've, we've absolutely aye. spoke too much aye, about that. Aye. aye. So let's go. Oh, I wanted to talk about the wee boy who took the job in BB B and Q. Or oh, oh, is that? Did he take a job in B and Q? So the wee be- <laughs> he went into one of the display toilets in B and Q and took a job in. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That is good, actually. Aww. See, that's a light-hearted jobby story. It's a, it's a light-hearted story. But what else have we got to say about it? I, I just think it's the quote from the mum was uh, specifically, she went in for a washing line, I turned round and he sat on the to- one of the toilets, ran to say, get up, the, the best bits of father's reaction to this. He le- She left to get wet wipes and came back and he still sat there and the hubby just stood and watched because he didn't know what to do. Sitting and watching, what do you do? Like, because once you start, you've got to... You can't what was the headline for the <laughs> What's that? What was the headline? Ian Poo! Ah, Ian Poo! Ah, you're a dirty bastard! <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Pee and Poo. Pee and Poo should have been. Should have been. Right, we'll talk about midwives then. Um, this has been revealed from midwives uh, on TikTok. A student midwife said the most annoying things that dads do and say in the delivery room. Uh, our list included sitting on their phones while the mother is pushing, falling asleep and asking how much longer is it going to take. Gentlemen, you've all had children. <laughs> What stories from the delivery room do you have? Gerard uh, leaving Rangers. What do you want to say? <laughs> <laughs> I, was pacing, I was pacing about the flare going, oh no, man, oh no, oh no. And the one midwife is going, she's fine, she'll be all right. Fucking <laughs> 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 Gerard's going to Villa. She'll be fine, she'll be fine. <laughs> Chris, get, but when Keen arrived? I fell asleep. Did, Did you, you fall asleep? Uh, I know even that. See how like they give them the mad exercise ball and the mat and all that to kind of move them on with the with the the labour. I lay down in the mat, put on extenders on the telly, and fucking fell asleep. Now, <laughs> bearing in bearing in mind it was Christmas Eve, Keen was born on Christmas Day. Oh wow, really? Yeah, I know that too. Aye, so Christmas was, Day. Aye, man. So it was like oh. it, the the I, I was up the night before Christmas Eve. It was a full twenty seven hours or something like that. My head was singing off. And I just thought, I'll lie down and I'll rest my eyes for five minutes. Out for the count, man. A good fucking four hours or something I was out for. You didn't miss the birth though, Chris, no? No, no, no. 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 Right, okay. Uh, Stephen, any stories from Leo and Leah? Uh, it was long. Both of them were pretty long. Leila was really long. Uh, I think, was it Leila? Leo, I read a cracking book, man. That, now, the film I made, Bradley Cooper was in it, American Sniper. Oh, yeah, fucking, yeah. Mm. I read that book, man. That was brilliant. Uh, <laughs> the full book? Aye. <laughs> what the hell? I can, boys, boys, I can read like fuck when I start, right? I don't put the things down when I start, right? But no, I read that. Uh, then the wee midwife we had for Leo, like, Leila, uh, Nicola was not really a what? She just, it came really quick, man, eventually, man. But then it was like the wee woman was deep. She couldn't really hear what Nicola was saying. Nicola was like, it's coming, it's coming. And she's like, ah, right, okay, she couldn't really fucking hear what she was saying. But apart from that, she went away, came back, then the rain was born, and I was like, just hodding her on and all that. 
It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. She done brilliant, man. You, fucking... you, John, you had in. She's standing uh, no, behind I... the laptop, isn't she, Stevie? <laughs> <laughs> both, both, both minds were uh, through the sunroof, so it was just, you know, we operation and all that. But I, I do remember, like, uh, um, Lady Marmalade was playing uh, in the, the waiting room, uh, well, in the delivery room when it was playing. I was like, that's what fucking got us here in the first place. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this week on Football Daft Focus, if you've got a tail of the W room, uh, give us hit us up Football Daft Pod, drop us a DM on there. We'll, we'd love to hear that next week. Uh, but on Football Daft Focus this week, we're going to return to one of our friends, a friend of the show. You and Cameron is going to come on. He's been on a Twitter tirade over the last couple of days, weeks about Scotland, and he wants to get it off his chest. So we're going to be speaking to you in very, very soon on the big question. I know you need to set an argument. What is the coldest football stadium in Scotland? Uh, we'll get into that in a bit. Grado's got three riddles. Um, yeah. Oh, aye, thanks to everybody who sent some. Set, they've been really, really up, up their game. <laughs> you, were looking, you were looking for that, Grace. Every, that... every message, every message they go. Please do not mention. Do please do not slag this. I need money. You've been fucking brutal, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You've been reading them out. Oh, That's well. a shite. <laughs> we're going to talk moments of the week, and we're going to get our fix of football as we go soccer daft and look at the MLS. Yo, man. <laughs> right, gentlemen. All men strive for gold in their life, do they know? Gold medals, watches, gold, everything. However, there's a certain type of man that likes to go the extra mile. He walks with the confidence of an eagle and he giggles in the face of danger. He's big, he's hairless, he's a big winning machine. That's and the opposite he, of me. When he, when he unzips his pants, what does he see? Platinum. That's right. Manscaped would like to introduce to you the best and biggest ultimate hygiene bundle yet. The Platinum Package 4.0. Manscaped, we all know they're the leader in below the waist grooming. Now, trust them with the whole shebang. Join the 4 million men, that's including us, sitting here today. We all trust Manscaped, and we all go to manscaped.com forward slash daft, and we get 20% off and free shipping. So, Manscaped boys, have we been manscaping this weekend? Is Have we been doing the thing? I did. I've got one that I use. On my Davina McCall's, and I've got one I use in my boat race, my Chevy Chase. So I used one of my Chevy Chase the other day. Right. Uh, so? <laughs> I have took myself down to, down to the wood, Grado. Right, nice to hear. Down nice to, to hear. the John? Uh, well, I'm going on holiday next week, so I am going to be doing a proper good manscape session to get me looking good and holiday ready. Right, well... Troops, if he's all listening in, he's wanting to be part of the, the gang. Uh, well, they've designed this package to fully align your entire hygiene routine with elite products. You're going to get the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose trimmer, the Body Wash, the Shampoo and Conditioner. You're getting deodorant in here. You're getting the Crop Preserver Anti Chafing Body Odorant. You're getting the Ball Spray Toner. You're getting the Boxers. You're getting the Shed Travel Bag. Everything you need to hold your goods while you're traveling. The weed whacker and the ear trimmer, they've both got uh, safe shit in them so that it doesn't kind of tear you up your delicate parts and holes. It's waterproof as well. You can upgrade your shower routine with the body wash and the shampoo and conditioner. Your skin is going to be feeling hydrated as well as your hair. You're going to be smelling tremendous. And don't forget the aluminium free ultimate premium deodorant for that cologne quality scent on the go. We've all tried this and they we're really, really happy with, his, with the results. So uh, they've even threw in two, two free gifts this year. The, uh, the boxers, as I've said before, the travel bag as well. Bring your comfort in boxers to another level. Uh, cover yourself all bases from head to toe. It's the best for your shebang. Now, get 20% off and free shipping with the code daft at manscaped.com. 20% off now. Don't you dare give up this offer. It's fantastic. It's time you enjoy the finer things in life. Get yourself a platinum package for your platinum package. 
Uh, it's time for Football Daft Focus as we get into the big talking points of Scottish football. It's been a turbulent couple of weeks for the national side. A shortened performance in the World Cup qualifier against Ukraine was followed by a pretty confident display against Armenia. Then we had the absolute horror show in Ireland before another victory against nine-man Armenia the other night there. On to assess those performances and stick in his own oar from the big Saturday football show. And Ewan from Ewan and Cat, friend of the show... It is, of course, you and Cameron. How are you, you and? Thank you, thank you. Nice to see you, Stephen. Nice to see you, Grado. Nice to see Tall. you. Lovely good to, have, to see you. Good to have you on, mate. Cheers, bud. Johnny Mac, thank you. Lovely introduction, that. Uh, Scotland cool. were shite in the last couple of weeks. What more do you want me to say? <laughs> right, OK. Where are, you, where are you sitting with Steve Clark? Because you went in a tirade after the Ireland games, you and... Is, is, does he go or does he stay? I would have given him... Um, I would have got rid of him after the um, the Ukraine game. That's how I mean. I was just angry. I was really upset with that performance. Not only was I angry and upset with that performance, but it was an opportunity miss like we've never had before. We'd drawn England in a World Cup group with Iran and the United States. What an incentive that was! We also had the chance of a Battle of Britain game against Wales and Cardiff. We turned up against the Ukraine, and something was fundamentally wrong. And I thought we had it wrong from the get go. The setup. The tactics, I think we played players who were clearly not fit. Um, Lyndon Dykes, he had a huge strapping on his thigh. And we said before the game, someone's no right with him. We have players 100% ready for this game. And if you're even just 90% ready, then you shouldn't be playing. Billy Gilmore was off the pace. He hadn't been playing for Norwich recently. He'd been carrying an injury as well leading up to the game. Aaron Hickey looked like a fish out of water. Um, out of position, I think the back three didn't work, and I think we got overrun in midfield, and it took forever for Steve Clark to change it. And the problem with Steve Clark, like he was at Kilmarnock, and although he was good at Kilmarnock and he was successful at Kilmarnock, he's very arrogant, he's very stuck in his ways, and he doesn't like to change things. He doesn't like he doesn't like to be proved wrong, and it's up to him to go and prove people wrong, like the fans and the media. And we've all got an opinion on him and he doesn't like that. And he gets very prickly when you have a pop at him or the players. And I just think after the Ukraine game, because he got it so wrong on so many questions that were asked of him that night, I think he should have gone. I really do, because I'm sickened that we're not going to be at the World Cup. I mean, we're playing England in the World Cup, Iran, the USA. That's what our group would have been. And I think we'd have got out that group. And I, I was watching the game the other night there in the playoffs in Doha. And it was um, Australia versus Peru. And they were in the actual stadium where Scotland, where we played three of their games, had they got there. The stadium was stunning. The, the pitch was immaculate. And it just made it worse for me that I was looking at a pitch in a stadium that we really should have been at. Because I think if we beat the Ukraine, I think we beat Wales. They carried a lot of luck. I don't think they were particularly great. I think we beat them. And that would have given us a great chance in uh, Qatar to get out that group. So I think that's why I was so angry with Steve Clark that it was such a big opportunity and miss that he needed to go for that because we should be at that World Cup. And he didn't take us there. And that's that's down to him. Can I ask a question can I ask a question, you and see when see we, when you tweeted all that stuff, what was it I never actually saw a lot of it, but what was the reaction for people on Twitter when you, you were tweeting that you wanted Clark to go? I, I put forward 21 games. The last 21 games that we had played, um, when, when you actually look at it, even like the, the scraping of the 1-0 win against Moldova, the 1-0 the victory against Luxembourg, those sorts of results, we weren't that great in those games. The performances weren't that good either. Um, but we got the result. And I know if you're winning, then you jump on the bandwagon and you enjoy the ride because you're on a five-beating game Un, you're un, unbeaten over five games, six games, seven games, eight games. All looks great on paper, but when you actually look at the games individually, they weren't any great. I mean, we beat Denmark 2-0 at Hamden, but they turned up, had already qualified. They were trying at new players. They were not really up for it. We were, and we won 2-0. But the game previous to that in Denmark, it was 2-0 going on 6-0. And again, Stevie Clark, because of his reluctance and his arrogance and his system and his team selection, his tactics, he didn't change it that night until too late. And by that time, we're 2-0 down and we're never really in the game. So when you actually analyse individual games, even though we won those games, the performances haven't been that great, but we've got away with it by winning the game. 
And yeah, you could pick out Austria. But again, when you look at stats and the facts of that game, Austria battered us. And we came away with a, a 1-0 win through a, a, a dodgy penalty that um, Shea Adams had won for us. So I think overall, it's been great and we've enjoyed it. But when I think when you analyse it, individual games, I don't think Steve Clark's been that great for us. I think we have got to the position we got in spite of Steve Clark. So if, it's, if not the, off, it's not often I say this, but it's really fucking hard to disagree with everything oh, you're saying. Oh, wow, wow. No. <laughs> I think you're bang on, see, even with the stuff, because you're right, he doesn't like to indulge with the, with the press, doesn't he? No, he doesn't like... He's, he's, he's arrogant. Really he's, he's, uh, he's arrogant. He's um, very, very arrogant. I, mean, I, I even saw. Oh, here, see, is the Rangers boys waiting in now? No, I'm no, just saying. No, no, this is what I said earlier. Sorry, I, I even saw it. Tom English tweet something, and his boy get get tore in was calling him a fucking yeah. idiot or something like that as well. Mm. So, but there's, there's. I think that's the what John. What I said to you before we started the show today. Yeah. I think there is there is a certain element of that. The new what you said. Yeah, there's a Rangers boys getting tore in, right? It's no secret that there's no love lost with Rangers fans and Steve Clark. There's no love lost at the moment with a lot of Rangers fans and a lot of Scotland fans. There's a, there's a fraction, there's a divide there, right, that's no nice, right? But that doesn't take away from the fact what you and saying there, right, all right, the guy goes to the Euros, we all jumped on the bandwagon, we all loved it, myself included, it was great. But see what we've done at the Euros, we've done exactly the same what we've done there with two games to go to qualify for the World Cup, we fucking bottled it. We got a draw. Yeah. We got a draw against England. It was on a plate for us. Our first game was at home, was at Hamden yeah. against Czech Republic. We get stage fright, we bottled it. Clark, again, is lack of tactical fucking noose at times during a game yes. to change it is, is so apparent, right? And then when it yeah. comes to the World Cup qualifiers, You've got Ukraine, right? You beat them, you then play Wales, like you're saying. To go to a World Cup, two games, I think, all right, it goes to the Euros, but we were fucking pissed at the Euros apart from one game, right? One well, I mean, game I mean, where I mean, battled. Stephen, Stephen, I think when you analyse getting to the Euros, it was Alex McLeish who got us to the playoffs in the first place to give us that mm-hmm. chance to get to yep. the Euros. Now, look mm-hmm. at the games that, that Steve was in charge of. Israel, in the first of those playoff games, it was nil-nil at Hamden after 120 minutes and Israel were the better side and we went through on penalties at home Mm -hmm. to Mm -hmm. Israel. Think about that. Mm -hmm. We then go to Serbia. We go to Serbia and again, we take the lead to Ryan Christie. Good goal. Serbia were the better team on the night. I thought we were putting a really good defensive battling performance and we went to nick it and we nearly nicked it. Serbia then go and score a late equaliser in the 91st minute with a header, which on reflection, deserved to get the equaliser. Second half, if it's not for Craig Gord, sorry, for David Marshall and goal, we lose that game in extra time. We then go to penalties, and it's just luck at the end of the day when it comes to penalties. So we struggled against Israel, went through on penalties. We put in a battling defensive display away at Serbia, and we're 1-0 up, and they peg us back, and then we eventually go through on penalties. We then get to Euros, and in some ways it's like a home tournament for us. We've got three games at home. Yes, I know we're at Wembley, we're at London, but it's still in the UK. We've not got much travelling to do. We can stay in our camp where we're based and get ready for the game. It was on two a plate for us. It was on a plate I know for two us. games at Hamden. Two mm-hmm. games at Hamden we had, and we bottled it in both games. We were awful in that opening mm-hmm. game. Again, the Czech Republic, yeah. it was two going on four, five, six. It was awful. We then got to England, mm-hmm. and because it's England, we put in a brilliant defensive battling display, and we get a brilliant nil-nil draw. That really should have set us up for a grandstand finish at home, at Hamden, against Croatia, and, a, and we bottled it again. They, we had Modric in the middle of the park, on his own, ran mm-hmm. the show. I know yeah, he's yeah. a world-class player. He just won the, the Champions League with Real Madrid. I get that. But my God, he ran that show and mm-hmm. they made us look ordinary at home. We didn't take advantage of being at home and we got thumped 3-1. And again, it was 3-1, easy, comfortable. And we went out in, in a whimper. And I'm thinking... What? Was it one goal at the Euros scored? Aye. Yeah. One but, goal, aye. And it, I mean, you, see when you say it like that, and you know, a lot of Scottish fans, I think they're happy to accept mediocrity. To, I mean, like Sir Ewan, I bet you there was folks saying to him, Oh, but who else is going to be the manager? Who else is going to be yeah, the manager? You get all I hate that, that mindset because it's like we, we were talking earlier, right? We, you know, we've been talking about Tam Coates gone abroad, right? Told us kind of told did you know, say, oh, he's gone abroad, we'll not see him again. Calvin Ramsey could do it in Liverpool, he's going away into the world. Everybody, there's 
I see that mindset. Do you get what, do you get what I'm coming from? I know, I know you mean. When, 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 when I put forward the case as to why Steve Clark should go, a lot of people says, well, who do we get in? That's not the point. The point well, is, is Steve Clark the right man to take Scotland forward? I firmly believe that this Scotland squad that we've got right now is a brilliant squad with depths, with options. I don't like the back three. I don't like the back five. We're uncomfortable to watch. And we always seem to be overrun in midfield. McTominay is never a centre-back. Oh, and, the, and, and McTominay is never a centre-back in a million no. years. He should never be uh, at centre-back. And I don't know why he, he, he persists with that. He, he's got to stop going with his back five. And if he does want to go with the back five, and I think we look better when Tierney's in there. I, I, was going to, I was going to say, you. I think I think for, for me, you know, personally, is that when Tierney's in that, Back five. That's when the system works. When you've got Tierney that's when it works. Half. But the thing, but then no, but, it's like but he needs to change was... it. He needs to go four, uh, four, yeah. three, three. Yeah. If, you know, but he's scared four, to do that, but he's too arrogant. I, yeah, I, I, again, I think he's too arrogant. If he, he, he showed that, I mean, I, I mean, for me, when he put in uh, Liam Cooper instead of um, Scott McKenna for that game against the Ukraine, I was gobsmacked at that because. McKenna's been outstanding for Nottingham Forest. Yeah. He's on a high. He's just got promoted to the Premier League, having a brilliant season with Forest. He should have started that game. But there yeah. again, without Tierney, the back five doesn't work for me. I think John's right. When you've got Tierney in that back five, it works better it when works. he's it in it because he gives Scotland another option in, in piling forward with Robertson on the outside of him. But when he's not there, we just look awful. And I don't think that Steve Clark. I, I think he's too arrogant to change it and to change the tactics up, even if Tierney's not there or a certain player's not there to, to make it work. I would go a 4 2 3 1 personally. I'd have Gilmore and McTominay sitting in there, maybe, and then maybe um, uh, Christie supporting Shea Adams and probably a McGinn or a McGregor, McTominay or drop McTominay, McGregor and um, Gilmore. But I'd, we've got options to play that system. Um, and have one of the centre backs, one of the sitting midfielders dropping in and have the full backs forming for a bit like Liverpool, like with, with Fabinho. I know yeah. we're not Van Dyke right. and I know we're not um, Kanate or Matip, and I, but I do think we've got the players who would work a 4 2 3 1 formation. Yeah. It's the best Scotland team we've had in a long time, man. It's oh, easy. And, and we've also got, and we've got options on the bench as well, Stephen, mm. and that, that's what really frustrates me. We've got big... options on the bench and we've got a really good squad. And I don't think Steve Clark's getting the best out of that team or allowing no, no. the players to be the players that they actually are. You look at Shea Adams for Southampton, he's brilliant. But the, the way the Scotland set up is, it doesn't suit Shea Adams because mm. he's isolated. He needs someone around him. He's a, yeah. he's a, mm -hmm. He plays at buzzes right. about. He's got nobody alongside him and he gets isolated a lot I, of the time. I think that's he can't really get him into the game. The problem with Scotland is the you like say you and they don't have that striking option. I think Shea Adams is a great find, a great player. His hold up player is, ex I think his hold up play is absolutely exceptional. But they yeah. don't have a, a guy that's probably Lyndon Dykes have tried obviously up with him. He's not a level. I don't think that Shea Adams is at really. And I think you, that's the one big fault with Scotland at the moment is finding that striker. You know, Scott Wright. Scott Wright. Scott Yeah. Cool. Can I, I'm, I'm just going to go around the lot of you, right? Because you've asked me my opinion on Steve Clark, and I and I would have changed him after the Ukraine game. Would you change him, John Mack? No. Would you change uh, him, Stephen Purdon? Yep. Grado, would you change him? I would. Toll? I would, not And the reason the reason why I wouldn't is because I think there, there's a nucleus there, and I think he's a good enough manager to eventually get them going. And I think they all... Oh, the squad are kind of singing off the same hymn sheet as him. I think the squad are, are in support of him as well. See if it comes to a point where the squad don't want to be, don't want him there, and he's not doing what they're maybe, they're maybe wanting to do. Then, and I know he's a manager and he's the one that he eventually, like he's the the bottom line, he's the one that, that decides what happens. But yeah. If you're if you've not got that dressing room behind you, then it's a it's a septic atmosphere you know so as, as long as they are as long as they're supporting him then I would keep him in there I think he's got something definitely I mean you don't you don't do what he done with Uh and if you're not a talented manager you know told 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 do you know do you know what we probably need a plastic pitch at Hamden <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, 
He's very good on a plastic pitch. But do you know what? The question that's being asked of Steve Clark is the same question that's being asked of Gareth Southgate down south after a shocking Nations League campaign. And England fans and pundits and media are now looking at Gareth Southgate and thinking, hold on a minute. We keep banging on about how he got us to a World Cup semi-final and he got to a Euros. And now they're going, oh, but yeah, but he only beat Panama, Tunisia, Colombia and Sweden to get to a World Cup semi-final. Now they're realising that even Scotland could possibly go to a World Cup semi-final in 2018. So the same questions are being asked of Steve Clark, are being asked of, of uh, Gareth Southgate. Is it we've carried a wee bit of luck in spite of the manager to get where we are? Time will tell. And I hope he proves me wrong and proves Gradle wrong and, cr- and proves Stephen Purden wrong. But I have a funny feeling that I'll be back on the show in uh, less than a year because I think Clark won't last another year. We will I see, agree, we will I see. agree 100%. We will see. Maybe we could get Gareth Southgate as the manager <clears throat> if Steve Clark goes. Nah, by, by the way, I hope he stays England manager because they're never winning it with him as manager. No, they're not. They're not, which is great news no. for everyone. Ewan, thank you so much for coming <laughs> on um, as ever. Um, yeah. we, We'll, we'll definitely, hopefully, not speak to you in a year's time. And uh, hopefully, Steve Clark, Scotland do well, and we we flourish. But we will wait. And can see. I can I not talk about Eintracht Frankfurt? That was a good night. That. <laughs> 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 Yeah, fuck you, man. Yeah, they are you. Bye, man. Bye, Bye, man. Bye, man. Bye. 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 <laughs> Football dafts. Big question. I'm not too sure why I got into this argument, but this broke out in my work. We found ourselves arguing about what is the coldest stadium in Scotland. I am 100% convinced that Broadwood is the coldest stadium in Scotland. Despite it not being on the coast, despite it not being up north, Broadwood, for me, is the coldest stadium I've ever been in. And I've been in Petaudry, I've been in Inverness, I've been in Gayfield, I've been all over the place. And I'm convinced Broadwood's the coldest in Scotland. However... Are you boys? No. No. There are, there are two stadiums that I've been in where I thought my fingers were going to fucking fall off. Right. One was Petaudry and the other one was Fils Park. Right. Fils, Fils Park. Park. I, Shire. It, 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 it's still in Shire. Shire. Mm-hmm. It was so fucking cold and it's completely enclosed as well. So it, it baffles me how it was so cold, but, but fuck. Every single time I was there, I felt I was even in the summer. It was freezing. It was weird. <laughs> the the coldest I've ever felt was we were filming on a Saturday and I finished early and I went to Dumbarton Stadium to watch Rangers. We were it was the dark days <laughs> and we played Dumbarton and it was fucking freezing. It was freezing. It wasn't a nice stadium. It was horrible. Okay, one yeah. Air United in February. Playing Rangers in the Scottish Cup in the you know open nay, nay roof, yeah, was the, 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 the terrace, yeah. the standing uh-huh. terrace, yeah. and it was snowing and it was oh. fucking brutal. And I'm what? telling you, it was it was it was it was sear. You know that way it was actually sear. <laughs> I, I know exactly what you mean, mate. What month was that in February? <laughs> <laughs> February, <laughs> February, <laughs> but what? I remember about that game. It was Tav's first game as the captain. I remember that. There you go. Um, well, we put out to the listeners, um, and they are com- they came in thick and fast. A real easy question this week: What is the coldest stadium in Scotland? George says Dumbarton agrees with Stephen. Uh, when the wind comes off the water, especially at winter, the wind swirls, and it's not great watching goalkeepers take goal kicks down there. Horrible, man. Horrible. Douglas <laughs> says Hannah Park, home of Shots Bon Accord. Froze at a game in me. Oh no, she froze at a game in me. Oh no, oh, I'm like. <laughs> it's Hannah Park to name the stadium, Grado. <laughs> Douglas it <laughs> oh, Sorry, sorry, Douglas. <laughs> uh, P. Oh, you're going to. P. Mac B says Belsley and Fraserburgh for, oh. for non top weeks. And Gayfield and our growth for the bigger clubs. Gayfield's freezing as well. I, I, I think I don't think Arbroath like that talk. I think they always see when you, you say about how free. I think they mo- they kind of moan when 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 and let see when the pundits say and you're up to Arbroath and it's free. I don't think they like it. What does Captain Ricky Will uh, Little say about it? Go and ask him. Go and ask him. Do you think? Go and ask Ricky if Arbroath is the coldest stadium. 
Ask no, I, don't, I don't make it your man back on the commentator. Like, I was his name. Fermer. We'll get Fermer on this back. Fermer. Aye, we'll get him back on. Kerry, I'll, I'll tell you something. I don't, I don't like get being called, called up here, eh? I mean, <laughs> It's fucking, it's, it's nice and warm up here. You can dip your tears in the fucking water. Yeah. <laughs> you can taps off. Uh, Kerry's going to touch his simply for park. It is, for park is really cool. I've been a few times, man, but I've never really noticed that. I've always been a bit baby, baby and all that going, but I can't have really noticed it's been mm. cold, to be honest. It's, it's, it's odd. Noticed. It's mostly empty when I go there, obviously. Uh, Rab, no argument. <laughs> Cowden Beath was there for a Scottish Cup game just before COVID. Coldest game ever. I caught Cowden Beath's a badge in as well. Tom says Broadwood seems to have its own Arctic I'm micro glad. climate. I'm glad someone agrees. Glad John Addy, I remember as a wee boy going to watch Clyde versus Rangers 95 96. Guys, I was playing. I mean, was Chad, did Chad Nicholas play for Clyde? He did. I think Chad. I don't know if he was playing then, but was he? Would he have still been playing 95, 96? I would, probably would have been, actually. Aye. Aye. I remember Aye. that game. And as a wee boy, I remember being freezing. So there's another one for... No, no, there's, a, there, there's, there's another one for memory lane. <laughs> <laughs> as I delve into my... Memoirs. That's <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually chapter 15 of On The Ropes. <laughs> <laughs> you know about this though? What, 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 what autobiographies are going to be called? We, we uh, named each other. You're, you're on the ropes. What's your Stevie? Bob's your uncle. <laughs> <laughs> What's your still? What would mine be? Uh, the biggest small know. man in Scotland. Tall Tales. Tale of Tolls. Uh, oh, Tall Tales is good. Tall Tales. That, that is good. Tall Tall Tales. That, what about Total Tall Tales? Total Tall Tales. <laughs> John, what would yours be? I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not yeah, I've got to it, total, total, total tales. Yeah. Total, total, total tales. Try <laughs> saying that three times, yeah, Bevy and Total, total tales. Right. I can't say it, can say it once, sober. <laughs> jo- John's is, I own a big D. I own a big D, I, I do own a big D, I, I, but I've not talked about this yet, I uh, got my big D for the Ken McAllister stand this week, I am now proud sponsor of the D on the gable end of the south stand at Falkirk, uh, got my picture of Alex Totten and my big D this week. So That's the first thing you've had your hands on a big D in it, John. It is, it is. Uh, <laughs> back to the court, back, back to the listeners' responses, John says easy are both. <laughs> Just for the sheer possibility of supporters getting slapped by the sea and players kicking the ball into the water. Uh, Robert says Broadwood comfortably. Yes. Eggy says Petaudry. One word to answer. Mm-hmm. Ross says Falkirk before third stand was built. Not been in it since. Levy has to be up there too. Would you about Falkirk, John? Falkirk is cold. Uh, is, is, because you've got, obviously we've got only three stands, as you know. Because there's so much space right. in between all the people as well. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Colin, fucking savage, though, man. Another savage. one for Gay Fuel from Colin. He was there when Colin Steen made his debut for Rangers, scoring a hat-trick in it. Oh, freezing. Wow. Gregor says Broadwood, or as it's known, Ice Station Zebra. What does that mean? That's, <laughs> a, that's a film. Yeah, that's a, a film. Yeah. Oh, never saw it. Yes. Chris says, Cowden Beef are a broth. Des has got in touch. He says, always <laughs> found it to be a broth with Montrose. And uh, Stephen, from a personal experience, a broth, air, or Clyde. Don't know why Clyde is it's not next to water, but it's fucking Baltic. Yes. That's what you said, John. Yeah. That's, what you said. that's a bit weird, isn't it? Why is it the same Because it's on the hill. It's on the big hill. You know, oh. you've got... See, I, I, take my, I used to take my wee boy there because he used to play. Like, Aye. Clyde and it was... I never noticed it. I've done a penalty yeah. shoot. I've done a celebrity penalty shoot last summer and it was pure roasting. Hey, did you hit them all down in the middle? Penalty straight to the goalie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, asked for that, Graham. Graham, I, know, that's 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 I had to spin ten. Had to spin run ten times. Run the ball, my horn on the ball, then kick the ball. So it was fucking they don't look on the flag. That probably means you had to spin run once, fuck the ball, and then it came up. <laughs> What that means is he didn't actually have to do it, he just done it for a buzz and then went to kick the ball. I would love it if there's another fucking Twitcher or something or TikToker sitting watching it this one. Did he fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and let's leave it with Stephen who says, next question, what's the warmest? We'll have to do that next week. Fucking Seville. Yeah, Seville. 100%, <laughs> 100% man. <laughs> 
It's time for Soccer Dance! Now guys, as we're devoid of football over the next few weeks, we're turning our attention to America as football daft goes soccer daft. Uh, we've all decided to follow an MLS team. Um, now, should we do this section in American accents? I feel we should. No! No! <laughs> Remember, I did that. Remember, Rab done it for a full episode of wrestling daft. For wrestling daft. But I think we're a section grade, though, it might be alright. Should we do it? Should we try it in the middle? Yes! I like it. I think that should be it. That. Go, go! <laughs> right. So, guys, uh, welcome to Soccer Daft. Uh, so, <laughs> we've all decided to follow an MLS team this week, uh, and I'm going to go for New York City because I'm a Falker supporter, dudes. I want to glory hunt, you know? So, I'm going to go for uh, New York City. I'm uh, supporting New York City. Uh, Chris, you're going for Austin FC. Stephen has LAFC. And Grado, you went for Orlando City, haven't you, dude? Right on, dude. Of course I have. Come on, bro. Yeah. <laughs> now, Grado, big result for Orlando last night as they played out a 1-1 one one draw yeah. away to New England after yeah. an equalizer from center half Robin Jensen after a worldie from New England's Charles Gill. What did you make of the game, Grito? <laughs> yeah, I saw that goal, man. When it went tap in, I couldn't believe my eyes, man. Shit. But, you know, we uh, we went down 1-0 at 22 minutes from Carlos Gill, but we equalized in the 35th minute, and we failed to fucking... We failed to capitalize, but we never did, but we never do. Yeah. It, it, great result, though, Grito. Great result. Now, yes. let's move on to, to Steven. Due to the international break, uh, there's been few and far between games for your team, Steven. Yeah, 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 bro. Uh, yeah. You play the, the Seattle Sounders. Uh, they're coming up. Uh, yeah, we were, we were and, playing them on this Saturday, 18th of June, man. But the Sounders, I mean, they're, they're going for like three wins on the bounce. They're like three home wins in the bounce. So it's going to be quite a difficult place to go. But I feel after the San Jose result, we could really pull through this game, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're seventh in the Western Conference, so you're, you know yeah. there's a good chance LA flying at the moment, top of that Western yeah. Conference. Um, yeah, Chris, Austin play <laughs> this Sunday, and they're away to Montreal, who currently oh. sit third in the Eastern Conference. They're oh, dude, Detroit that's gonna be tight. Nine, nine, Shit, York you City. going, bro? Uh, you know something, brothers? <laughs> when when we go over there, we're going to Canada, bro. We're going there. We're going to see those Montreal Impact, brother. And you know something, brother? Austin have got exactly what it takes to get the result here, bro. I can't wait to see Austin take a few goals. Perhaps a couple from the PK spot, brother. You know, let's get there. Let's go. Come on, Austin. It's time to go. Oh, bro. yeah, brother. I know what you're saying there. Uh, finally, should be an easy win for the mighty New York City at home to Colorado, who currently linguish mid-table in the Western Conference. Though the big news is the Ronnie roars no more as he's departed, the big Judas that he is. He's off the standard Liège in Belgium. Big Whoa, hope so for dude, Nick you okay, man? You okay? Oh, I'm gutted, man. But Nick Cushing <laughs> is a good appointment. He used to manage Man City Woman. And now he's Ooh. been appointed. He was Ronnie's assistant. So hopefully he'll keep the roar going. Anyway, there's more big MLS <laughs> news because we just signed a $2.5 billion deal with Apple TV for the next 10 years. Calabunga, dudes. You know why that is, dude? You know why that is? Because the mighty LAFC have signed Giorgio Chiellini from Serie A. Former Whoa. Juventus defender has signed. So obviously... Apple are going to want to buy the rights to watch him oh. defend the LA's back line. Yeah. Absolutely. You know something, yeah. brothers? That guy is a World Cup winner, bro. And we yeah, can, once we get these guys into the MLS, it's going straight to the moon. Straight yeah. to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's all happening in the MLS right now. And thanks to you all for getting in touch. And thanks to y'all. <laughs> <laughs> letting us know your MLS teams. Clark is going for the Portland Timbers just because they cut a log. <laughs> Mark says the New England Revolution are nearest to Boston and cheers. You know, cheers with Sam and the guys. Great show, bro. <laughs> yeah, Where everybody knows your name. Everyone knows your name down there, dude. Uh, Don DJ says... He's going for Philadelphia Union because of the Italian Stallion Rocky Balboa. 
Whoa. What's Andy going for, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Andy's going for Philadelphia Union. Stumbled on him a few years ago in football manager and stayed for three seasons. Good on you, Andy. Hey, Kitch just Kitch- said he's going to Canada next week for his son's therapy. So I'm going for <laughs> Toronto FC. Good luck with that, bro. KR says Columbus Crew, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Gary, he's going for uh, Houston because WrestleMania 25, he went to that shit. And now he's going to follow the Houston Dynamo because he went to WrestleMania, brother. <laughs> Andrew, Andrew's going for Philadelphia. That's a popular choice this week, boys. Yep. Uh, he says he picked it due to my favorite show, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, starring Danny DeVito. Am I right, Danny DeVito? Yeah, you're yeah, right there, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you know something? Another reason why you should pick Philadelphia, bro, is because they make such a beautiful cream cheese. <laughs> <laughs> but Andrew always says he was pleased to see Bedoya was in their squad. He used to play for the Glasgow Rangers. Bedoya, you know Bedoya? But yeah. he says, wonder if people in Philadelphia know about Derry's Walls. Who's Derry? I don't know. Who is it? <laughs> Who is <laughs> Derry? Gary, <laughs> as for when to see DC United ages ago, he was absolutely steaming. And How many walls? <laughs> I just he just followed the drinks boy with the big beer pack finger boot. Made some pals that day back in 2011. What? A oh, day, that's bro. so cool. That's so cool. Look, awesome. Esper sent us a picture. Look at that. That's him in oh. Dundee United top. Who Dundee, and then he's got a picture of a man in a kill and a man with a shield. Dude, that ain't no kill. That's a skirt, goddammit. Oh, goddammit. That's a skirt. Anyway, that's soccer death for this week. Please get in touch. Let us know who you're supporting in the MLS, because we'll be talking like this for the next couple of weeks, because there's fuck all football on in Scotland. Absolutely, and you know something? What you gonna do when the MLS comes calling for you? Now time for Grado's Viradose on Football Day. Welcome to uh, the Riddles in Football Day. Let's get rid of my Grado. <laughs> riddle this, riddle me that. <laughs> Who's afraid of the big bad bat? Ah, and John, let's go for scores on the boards. What we sitting there, uh, currently? Scores on the boards. Let's go back to last week's riddle. We asked you this: uh, Disciples Dogfoot has house to rent. Disciples Dogfoot has house to rent. Chris, you got it. Can't remember. You can't remember. Disciples <laughs> Dogfoot has house to rent. Peter Paul Lett. Yeah, that's right. Peter Paul. Paul uh, uh, first in this week. I'm glad to say after last week. We asked for him. He's back. Our pal Dino got yeah, it. Hey, buddy. Welcome back, hey, buddy. Dino. 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 So Dino is up to nine points as a result of that, which leaves the score as follows. Mark one, two, one. Kean uh, is on one. Uh, Ali McDonald's one. Pat Palprick one. Detlin Ramage one. Ian Mika one. Jack one, Sheep FM two, John Mitchell two, producer Ryan two, Nicko Purden two, Ryan Dunbar three, Ali Dixon three, Albert Sledge four, Dean is on nine, Stevens on twenty four, I'm on twenty six. Chris only needs to get two more to win the game, uh, and Grado has three riddles. Can he do it this week? Right, that's a message to David Nisbet, who's been messaging me every week for April to get this riddle on the podcast, mate. And, <laughs> mate, got a riddle for the podcast? Did you get this right? So, any messages every week, but. We used it right at the start. Oh, so did he miss that? Did I'm getting them, mate. You don't need to keep... <laughs> did you get yeah, this, Lol? Well, what, what, what's his name? It's Polish, Mark David Nuss, but Grado... Why, why don't you just reply to the guy, for fuck's sake? Because he's busy... What am I doing now? Every, he's busy replying to everybody on Twitter, man. Give the guy a break. <laughs> so we've done this guy, David. Right? <laughs> so you can stop that. Um... <laughs> Right. Okay, here comes the first one. Fucking hell, man. What the fuck? Who's that? Are you just swearing at the listeners again? No, Gregor? no, no, no. I'm just trying to think if I can even say that. <laughs> um, right, here we go. First one. <laughs> Ch- chugging on a boat. Chugging on a boat. Thanks, Sailor. 
Nope. Wank ship. Chugging on a boat. David Seaman. Chugging on a boat. That's it. It's actually quite a good one, actually. I, I've got to say, this is my, my dental hygienist man again, so well done. Oh, dental hygienist. Uh, you were just... slagging him off a couple of weeks ago. I know, I know. Gado, you're so fickle, man. Sorry, bro. <laughs> Sorry, bro. I actually need to get back up to that dentist because my crown's failed. Chugging on a boat. But by the way, that that's not her fault. She's my hygienist. It's a, yeah, okay. yeah, just let us think of the riddle game. <laughs> Thanks for the info, though. <laughs> yeah. uh, Chucking on a boat. That's a quite a good. That's a good, decent one. This one. Is your first name Juan? No. Right, okay. That's fine. Is it to do with wanking? No. I would. What do you think? Well, chugging might be something. I ain't chugging. I like eating chuggy. What else do you chug? Well, oh, a train chugs, doesn't it? it goes That's true. Chug a train. 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 Chug a I don't know this one. Nah, move on. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Tap. I'm waiting. Tap. I'm tapping as well. I've got it, Matt. Right, well, he's a clue then. I've got it, Matt. I didn't know this was this guy's first name. Right. We're all done. We're out. Right, go. He's a clue. Right, if so, if I was talking about this player, I would never mention his first name. So that's why he's good. Maradona. No, but is, is Maradona? Go, what is he? Is, what's his first name? Diego. Oh, Diego sorry. Maradona. Fuck's <laughs> <laughs> sake. Uh, Cher. Cher. Madonna. <laughs> Pink. Grado. Grado. Who is it? Who is it? Nah, I don't know. I'm going I'm to take it that bit where I forgot what Diego Maradona's first name is, man. It's no, Diego, I don't know. mate, not Diego. <laughs> Who is it? Right, we're ready. Aye. The white were Canoe. Oh. Canoe! Oh. Hey, well done, the great call on Instagram. That's a fucking belter, man. Well, 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 do you know what I was well, thinking well, of? Uh, canoe, and I was going to say John Carew. I don't know why. That's a belter, man. Hey, I'm now going to go to Connor J. Connor J. That Connor Goldson? No, Connor, no, no, no. This is the guy's name on Instagram, and he keep, and I, I, I kept slagging him, writing, these are shit. Um... <laughs> So he's got a good one this week, I think. All right, let's go for this. This one is Toll Shrinking. For oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> but it's Chris Chris Molling. Molling. Chris Molling. Chris Molling. Chris Molling. Oh, nice. That, 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 that was Stevie. That was Stevie. That was well me. It was well me. That was Stevie, definitely. Thank you, Toll. I was very in there quick. John, come on. Only one behind you now, John. Come on. Wow. Come on. Oh, right. <laughs> they have it, man. Uh, okay, third and final riddle for this evening. Miss Robinson taking legal action against an overweight person. <laughs> Fucking hell, that's, that's, that's funny. Miss Robinson? Miss Robinson taking... <laughs> Miss Robinson taking legal action against an overweight person. <laughs> I, don't think, I, I don't think I'm getting any this week. Miss Robinson, what was her name in the film? Unless it's what was her? F I can't even seen the film. I can't even remember her first name in the film. What and uh, in the graduate? The graduate. The graduate. Yeah. That's Mrs. Rob. That's Mrs. Robinson. Actually, uh, Miss Robinson. Miss Robinson. Who's Miss? Who's that famous Robinson? Lucy. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Yeah. Who, who else? Keep going. <coughs> Hel Helen. Oh, Daniels. oh, she was Helen Daniels, wasn't she? It's it's a woman that fuck me, I've not seen her. Oh, Anne, 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 Anne. Right, there we go. What was the rest of the clue? She's taking legal action against an overweight person. Anne Budge. <laughs> Anne Sue. Anne Sue Fatty. And two, 
gets another point. Oh. And that was from Jordan Andrew Spears on Instagram. Cool beard on the profile picture. Hey. Cool riddle. Thanks Jordan. for being a fan. You know what it's like, man? It's like, it's like Toe could have won the league. It's like a team nearly winning the league and like dropping points and it's getting fucking put back to next week now. I know. I, mean? I know. So next week, you could take it next week. So uh, we'll see if Chris wins next week and this week's riddle for everyone listening is from listener Bentley Esteban who says Shia LaBeouf's role as a wee boy similar to a tattoo Shia LaBeouf's role as a wee boy similar to a tattoo and hit the theme tune <laughs> it's time for the football daft moment of the week and last week's results are in They've just come in, actually. Um, oh, whoa. The poll just closed, so it might be changing as we speak, but I don't think whoever... <laughs> the winner is certainly not going to change, that's for sure. Anyway, it's oh, not whoa. changed. Uh, in last place, Chris Toe's nomination of his, when they went to in Loch Lomond, the Gaffneys oh. only got 6%, Chris. What? That's poor. Poor. Fuck you, man. Fuck you, man. You're not getting that kebab recipe now for that. Yeah. You're not getting the kebab recipe. Uh, in third place, it was my uh, nomination. First drink, last drink. Oh, that only got 19%. In second place, Grado's choice of Michael Owen's issues after they were slacking off his daughter Gemma on the telly. Uh, only got 23%. But by a landslide this week, Grado's Adon got 52%, <laughs> thanks to Stephen Purden's nomination for that one, after Grado played for Aberdeen in a charity game. And I never played for game. Aberdeen in a charity game. You know what? Char- Let the truth get in the way of a good story, Graham. Shush. Yeah. Uh, See, even Kev the chef took a pop at me. I know. Stephen, you win, so you get to go first. What are you having? Well, obviously, it was a, it was a short-lived tenure he's had in Aberdeen. Uh, he's obviously been getting a lot of abuse online after his debut last week, so... He's put in a transfer request, and this week my nomination is Grado is no longer a Don. <laughs> That's definitely going to win. That is definitely, <laughs> definitely going to win. <laughs> right, uh, Grado. I want to be back up there. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, see, you take a couple of those at your day, drive four hours. Oh no, here we go. Cha- <laughs> you do a wee bit hey, of charity. You give, you give, you give. Give me, give me, give me a bit of entertainment, you know what I mean? And what do you get back? Abuse of teens on Twitter. Trolled. Cyber bullied. Trolled. A twitcher on his stream, slagging you off while playing Grand, Grand Theft Auto. You know what I mean? This, what hap- this is what happens, Grado, in the modern I day. I hate to say I told you so, Graham. There you go. A man coming That's... from where you come from, no... go to them. Grado's no longer standing free. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Grado, what are you nominating? I'm going for Tom Stoltman, Big Tom, playing in goals for the Soccer Aid World Team and sporting the number 55. Of course the he did. man in the world. But what about that, though, Grado? Tom Stoltman's 55. There was Martin Compton, 67. Hands across the divide, cuddling each other at the end. You know, I, I like to see that. I like to see that. But what I have to say, Compton got absolutely skinned for pace for that boy, Tom Grennan, who, by the way, what a he player. Was a player. What a player! What Tom Grennan was good. Tom Grennan, and there was another boy that was good for By the way, player and all. There was a, there was a few players, but see Tom Grennan, he's the worst since fucking Mo Johnson. He was playing for the World Eleven the year before, and now he, now he's playing for England. So <laughs> Harry's, fucking Lee Mack, Lee Mack, fucking scored, scored the winning penalty for the World Eleven. There you go. Anyway, mm. we're, we're getting the boy up, up the boy up front for the World Eleven. I think he's scored the, the penalty. Match. In a row, he? He, he always plays well. He used to go in Love Island. He was good, man. Aye. Oh, Kem. By the way, would you make a Love Island, Bob? Oh, fuck it. Mate, mate, I think he's getting better now, man. Mate, I'm telling you what, so you're getting banged for your buck. It usually takes a couple of weeks to kick in, man, but Some, I'm loving it. Now. That's exactly what you and Nick have been texting. <laughs> it's, it's someone no get, it's, did someone no get a wee, uh, a wee hand shandy the other day there? No. no. I, did what that not happen? What's a hand shandy? What's a hand shandy? We, uh, Is that what he's called? Uh, Honies uh, and Falkirk? Uh, a hand shandy? And Wanko Canu. I mean, the Wanko Canu. <laughs> <laughs> they got a wee Canu. The other week. Did that not happen? Did somebody get a wee fucking chugging on a boat? Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> did someone get a wee Canu the other night? I heard that. No. No, no? there was... Uh, there was... There was Tasha and... What's his name? And, uh, that was the one. Bit. 
Aye, and they got a wee canoe. Well, oh, a couple of guys have been in now. And, oh. Boy fed them, yeah. bro. What about the guy that fucking gave up his professional rugby contract to go into the show? Is that? Aye, that's that's, 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 that's James X. He got put in his place, place, didn't he? Aye. You're a bit weak about it. I like his you know? like reply, but there's a few fucking stone there and I'll fucking wrestle right. you to the ground. Like you, that. you know, you know, you know how that sounded like, Stevie? Aye. Aye. That's just. Aye, that was like Toma. That, that was just like okay, fucking. Okay, for so, great was going for Tom Stoltman. Chris, what are you going for? I'm going to go for the madman that was up giving his wedding speech. And he's got this heartfelt wedding speech about how he's met somebody that's got him through the past. Past Would you like to play the audio, Chris? Because I think we can play the audio of this. So this is what you're talking about, Chris. This one is, one is to the person who makes me happy every time I see their face. She's not even looking at me. The person who reminds me to appreciate, to appreciate little things in life has made me believe that anything's possible. You have truly turned my life around in such a short space of time, and I love you for it. I would highly recommend you all find someone that makes you feel the way that I do. So I would very much appreciate it if you could all raise a glass to Big Ange, what's the point there? That's decent hey, bad, to be fair. Hey, turn that off now, John. I think I've been at a wedding where that was. was oh, that, God's John, sake. Was that, was it, John, was that somewhere near? I don't know. I don't know where that was, Grado. I don't know where it is, but it's a good nomination, Chris. It's, it's good banner. It's good banner. I, I tell you something. He won't be going down under that night. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, good nomination like that. Uh, Lister's nomination comes from Bob Bag 1983, and it has to be, I don't know if you guys saw this, the Aussie keeper, Andrew Redmayne. Did you see this? So he, it was a penalty shootout against Peru uh, for the World Cup qualification. He came on, one of these goalkeepers that had been brought on in the 119th minute, right? Now, this guy was a total nutter. He was dancing along the goal line like most goalies do to put, uh, obviously, the player off, right? Oh, I need to see this. Uh, 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 and basically, what he, uh, more shit houseery than that though. When do you see his reaction when he saves the penalty? More shit houseery than that though. Even better than dancing on the the, the goal line. And actually, he got nominated uh, by the Wiggles. The Wiggles have inducted him into their Hall of Fame for dancing and renamed him the Grey Wiggle because he's wearing a grey top. So the, he's now with the Wiggles. But the best bit about this shit houseery was he took the Peru's goalkeepers water bottle which had all the instructions of the penalty takers and what direction to go to and he threw it away so Brilliant. the, the, the ball boy didn't know which way they're going incidentally martin boyle missed the first penalty in that match so that is a uh, bob agnick 83's nomination is for andrew redmayne aussie goalkeeper now legend and wiggle so that is to this week's listener nomination and if you want to vote on football daft moment of the week what are we having stephen purden Grado's no longer a don. Grado! Oh, what the heck? Something. What do you say? Tom. You think of something, Chris? I love Big Ange. <laughs> Andrew Redmayne, the wiggle, <clears throat> as uh, the listener nomination, and Grado. Tom dons the twi- Oh, fuck. Oh. Fuck, <laughs> fuck, <him. laughs> fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, Tom, Don, Tom Don's Tom, 55. Tom, Tom, Tom wears 55 shirts. There we go. So I, would, I would have went for Tom Cat myself. Tom Cat, I like a cat. Aye. I'll, I'll say that next week. Right, Tom, Cat, 50, Tom, Tom Cat 55. Aye, there we go. There we go. That's your Football Daft moments <laughs> of the week. Vote on yours. Get involved now at Football Daft Pod. <laughs> And that is it for this week's show. Oh. Thank you very much for listening. Remember, sign up to our Patreon if you want. The video version, you get to see Chris eat crisps. You get to see all manner of different things. You get to see Grado's penalty miss as well if you sign up to the Patreon as well. Patreon.com forward slash football. That, I really do hope we've started a few with this Twitcher. It's a Twitcher. That's a bird watcher, isn't it? It's a, a, what do you call someone that works? It must be a Twitcher. Someone that does stuff. I thought, on I thought some, that would be somebody with like a facial tick. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you very much for listening. Uh, 
Masters are coming up. We we put up the the Rangers, the Rangers and Celtic <laughs> Masters team have been put up for that. Oh, game. I can't oh, wait for that. By the way, looks brilliant. <clears throat> the Rangers team would give the current team a fucking mm. run for the money. I know that some good players playing for Rangers. Quell I'm telling you right now, player of the tournament will be Pedro Mendes. Pedro Mendes is playing. Barry Ferguson's playing. Friend Barry's always good at these six aside things. Is it he six is. aside? He is. No, oh, you're not having him. And then we've got a few decent players playing for uh, Celtic as well. Petrov is playing for Celtic. Who have you got? No, you have got, I mean, the, the, the strikers for both teams are brilliant because I think you've got, uh, who have you got, Carlton Cole up front? Chris? Carlton Cole and Simon Donnelly. Simon Donnelly. Like, look at that midfield, but Joe Lally, Chris, Chris Commons, Joe Lally, and, Petrov. and Petrov's no bad. Uh, and then Kelvin Wilson playing at the back. What the hell? Mark Wilson is struggling with injury, so he's playing for that. He's on big rab in the sticks. But I mean, the Rangers team, they've got Michael Moles and Chris Boyd up front, Pedro Mendes, Lee McCock, and Barry Ferguson in the midfield. Oh, is, that, is, Alan, that so, is that sold out yet? Alan Hutton, uh, Quell, oh, I don't know. think it is, no. Oh, I'm going to go with Leo. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. We should go all together. I and, film, and film, film stuff outside it. For Patreon? Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do I'm not sure. I'm just thinking probably don't go. I probably already got a deal with them or something like that. Who cares? We <laughs> no, 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 no. Aye, we go like WCW, too. Aye, right, right. right. man. Roll up right. with our DX t-shirts. Aye, we, we'll right. get a, what you call it? We'll get a tanker. Fucking right, right man. Right, so we're rolling into the Masters <laughs> tournament. We'll be down there. Hopefully, we'll see you there as well. Thank you very much for listening. Oh, by the way, Ricky, show. go back about the coldest park. All right, coldest park. Before we go, what is the coldest park according says, to Ricky Little? You don't, you, don't, you don't really notice it once you're playing. He says, I've played in much colder games away from Gayfield. Gayfield. My dad and that says it's freezing in the stands all through the winter. Right, so he hasn't told us what. The- Puts a bow on that, doesn't it? Right, follow, follow up there and find out what Puts the coldest Puts a bow on that one. Is. There we go. Uh, and that is it for this week's uh, Football Dad. Thanks very much for listening. Subscribe on Apple or wherever you get your podcast. Hey, Sarah, Sarah. What are we calling this week's show? Uh, whatever will be, will be. Whatever will be, will be after last week's case of that. Sarah. Also, I've got a trilogy about what next week's be called. What will be, will be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. There we go. Case of that, Sarah. Whatever will be, will be. The future's, the future's not ours yeah, to see. To see. Right, we'll keep going with this theme then. That's uh, the, what this week's show is. Thank you very much for listening to Football Daft. <laughs> we will see you on the next one. Audio Frontier. <laughs>